Today, I'm talking with Kwesi Imputa. We talked about living the value of empathy, making all the difference in the life of other people. Kwesi comes as one, yet she stands for thousands, representing her forefathers. And we also talked about receiving compliments, which is really hard for a lot of people, including Kwesi. I'm Yves Hanul from Who's Agile. My pronouns are he and him. Welcome to my channel. You see a lot of Agilists around me on this screen. If you want to hear me interviewing, please click that subscribe button because these are the people that I've invited so far. If you think I'm missing people, let me know in the comments. And that like button, well, if you liked today's interview, don't forget to click it. Hello everyone and welcome back. And I'm here with uh, with Kwesi and uh, we're going to have a, a nice chat. And I want to jump in uh, right immediately into this. And Kwesi, um, I'm at this moment, I'm in, um, I'm in Belgium and this is where I am. And you are, if I'm uh, not mistaken, in South Africa and um, you're um, in Google is showing at us to here um centurion, centurion uh, yeah. and that is not that far from pretoria and i thought i saw somewhere when i prepared johannesburg was not that far away as well i thought i'm not sure so that's uh, a lot of time zones away and so uh for me it's um it's 11 o'clock i don't know what time is it on your side um it's five past 11 yeah Okay, so ah, yeah, of course we're we're just going down, so we're in the same time zone. Yeah, we're in the same time zone, but miles apart, I guess. <laughs> yes, but miles apart. Yeah, but that's it's part of why I show this um, this little trick with uh, Google Earth because to show people a little bit on on where we are, how we are, and indeed I keep forgetting that time zones only work this way and this way. We're kind of in the in the right uh, in the right place. Okay, so but we jumped right into that, so. Tell us a little bit, who are you? Who am I? Okay, so my name, my full name is Kwezi Mputa, um, and I'm an Agile coach and trainer based in Gauteng. So as you saw, I'm living in Centurion, but I'm, my work um, base is Johannesburg, which is not so far from Centurion. Um, and I've worked as an IT professional since 2008, and my background and experience is predominantly in the area of business analysis, project management, um, Scrum Master um, across multiple industries. I'm also an active member of the Agile community. Um, so I'm very much drawn into initiatives that are focused on um, diversity or creating diversity in the Agile industry. I'm passionate about teaching. Um, I thrive on making a difference and adding value. I'm a wife. I'm a mother to two amazing daughters. And I'm ha I'm happy I'm happy to be here with you today. Thank you so much for inviting me, Eves, and for this opportunity. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I'm really happy that you're here as well. That we found the time, even if it's on a Sunday morning. Uh, I tried not to do too many of these things in the weekend, but um, it's um, yeah for for many different uh, moments with people in the community we need to look at what's the right moment to to, to find people so uh, i'm really happy you could make it let's jump right to into that first question about what is something that people usually don't know about you but but has influenced you in, in who you are what is something that has influenced me and people don't know about me um yeah a lot of things but um, I'm just going to share one thing. So I was mm -hmm. born in a place called uh, a township. So a township is a slum projects or the ghetto. I'm not sure if you have any in, mm -hmm. in Belgium, probably not. Um, but I was, born, <laughs> I was born and raised in a place called Guamashu, um, which is in Durban. I don't know if you're familiar with um, um, that city in South Africa, but it's about a six hour drive away from Johannesburg. And this township is one of the most notorious um, townships in South Africa. High statistics of poverty, crime, substance abuse, um, teenage pregnancies, just to name a few things. Um, and this, but this in a way also contributed towards my colorful childhood. 
um, because I had to, it had to be filled with a lot of imagination. I remember growing up, um, what we used to do in, with my friends, we'd make balls by wetting newspapers and folding them into plastics and we'd have so much fun. So you, we needed to be creative because our resources were limited. And this has definitely shaped the person that I am today um, because it's given me a sense of understanding of the difficult, situ um, difficult decisions that people make when faced with the worst adversity. So I think this has made empathy like a part of who I am. Um, and I guess it's quite useful in-, in, in our Empathy in, in the sense that you've seen people in the worst situations yeah. and you understand what, what problems that could, could bring in that sense? Absolutely. Like I've, I've seen people in the worst situations. Um, I have an understanding, like when you're faced with all the arts, some of the difficult decisions that people make. Um, and, I, and it's definitely allowed me to have empathy, um, even in my career as an agile coach. It's, it's absolutely, I guess it's if people, when people meet me, that's the one thing that they share that she's um, crazy. You've got, you've got, you like living the value of empathy. So that's definitely something that has shaped the woman that I am today. I really like that you bring it up with, with the whole story because um, sometimes I hear people when they were in, in, in yeah, growing up in their situations and then when they become, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, completely different or they, they, they have change their situation. They say, see, I can do it to everybody else. And then they have less empathy. And then there's other people. Yeah. Like, like you who that actually do it, use it in, in the good way. Um, the situation you grew up with is definitely not good, but you try to use it as, as much as, as possible and, and as good as possible. Not to, I would say not to forget your past, which is very mm -hmm. admirable. Um, and I think, what we all need um it's tempting to to um to forget it and to then not have empathy for the others but it's it's much more desirable to to do what you do so thank you for for well for being who you are first of all but sharing that part because it's it's it's, it's um it it's um you also mentioned something almost sideways but I, I think it's interesting for people to realize you say okay we live uh, six hours drive from Johannesburg and it made me realize again how big South Africa is um, and many people don't realize it because we we well this is a nice example of the map is not the territory mostly the maps that we see Africa seems a lot smaller than it actually is yeah. if you if you look at the numbers Africa is like yeah, the, the, the continent Africa is so huge compared to Europe and to America. Um, and we don't always realize that, yeah, six hour drive. For me, six hour drive brings me uh, over Paris. So I'm already in another country. Uh, I, I don't think in Belgium is so small that I don't think I can drive for six hours, except for traffic, of course. But if there's no traffic, every every direction i drive with more than six hours i'm in another country and maybe even two countries because if i go to the direction of uh, luxembourg i probably am already um in another country so that's how small my country is and that's how big your country is absolutely it's um yeah it's but it's it's a nice for people to understand much more of the world to see wow yes. this is what this means yeah, often um, when I speak to people like from across the world, they, they think that Africa is just one country. They don't realize that it, Africa is actually a continent with lots and lots of lots of colorful and different countries and cultures. Um, so it's, it's, it's very nice to have this opportunity to share a bit about our little um, country, a little in, in inverted commas, because you're saying it's it's very big um, in, in, like as compared to where you're from. Um, yeah, and, and just giving people a taste that there are different places like Durban, Johannesburg, I'm in Centurion. Yeah, there's a lot of places in South Africa. South Africa, we've actually got 11 official languages. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. It's, you said cultures. I was like, wait, there's this. Yeah, it's insane how many languages there are. And, and yet, every South African I am in contact with, you mm -hmm. people speak very well English. You're, so it feels almost like English is a non-official language that, that everybody speaks over there. I'm not sure if that's just my interpretation or how, how is that? 
Easy. It's the working language. So we, because like it's the business language. So um, we, it, I think it's taught in all schools for, for just to help people like get jobs and, and all of that. Um, but I think we could do more in terms of um, like, you know, teaching people more of the indigenous languages in South Africa. So I'm Zulu. So I'm from the tribe Amazulu. Um, and I speak the language Zulu. So my you name speak, is Kwezi. You speak, yes. So I just wanted to share, uh, my name is yeah, Kwezi, go ahead. Um, which, which is Zulu, and it actually means the morning star. Oh, such a nice name. That's that's lovely. Thanks for sharing this, because that's definitely great. But when you say, I speak Zulu, um, how many of these 11 languages do you speak? You just speak Zulu, or do you learn other languages in Africa? Um, so then, so Zulu is part of like the, like it's Nguni, the bigger subset is, is, the, is from, it's a subset from the Ngunis, right? And within mm -hmm. the Ngunis, I speak all those languages. So there's Zulu, Xhosa, Ndebele, um, Siswati. So I do know how to speak um, the languages that are in the Nguni, um, that fall under Nguni. Mm -hmm. Because they they are a bit similar, but yeah, but they, there's certain words that are also different. So I'd like to still learn more. I'm still trying to learn um, Sesotho, um, but yeah, I'd really love to one day be able to speak all eleven of, of our beautiful languages. Wow, that's that's that sounds yeah. I'm, I can speak English. Well, my my mother tongue is Dutch, so I speak Dutch. Um, the second language in my country is French, and and then. The, the third, we actually have three official languages, so the third one is, is German, but I'm totally not able to speak. And English is not even an, an official language, but a little bit like what you say, it's the work language. Everybody just learns it. You Everything you see on television or whatever uh, these days is, is English. So, um, yeah, my children are much better in English than they are in French, which is a second language, and I think that's the same for me as well. Mm. So it's... Uh, so just thinking about 11 languages, that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Okay, let's jump into that, uh, that second question. If you had not been doing what you've been doing, what would you, so it used to be if you had not been into IT, but uh, because not everybody is exactly in IT, I thought let's change yeah. it to, if you had not been doing what you, exactly what you've been doing, what, what do you have any idea what you would have done? I know exactly what I would have um, done. So I, I would have mm. been a teacher. Um, so I always wanted to have an opportunity to make a difference in people's lives and, you know, one day teach. Because, you know, I believe that each day, like as a, as a teacher, you have an opportunity to make a lasting impression on, on, a, on students. Um, so I would often like walk around my, the township, the streets of Guamashu growing up, and I would look at some of my peers who had fallen into those bad habits, such as drugs, substance abuse, teenage pregnancies. Some of them had even dropped out of school. Some of them, um, unfortunately, also f fell into crime. And in my heart, Eves, I would think that if only they had one person, just one person, um, recognizing the possibility within them of creating a better life, for themselves. Maybe their future or outcome could have been different. So that's what definitely drew me towards being a teacher. But unfortunately, my parents were completely against it. Um, they were completely against me becoming a teacher because they were born into the apartheid era, uh, which is the era of racial segregation. I was also mm -hmm. born into apartheid, but um, I was born at a time where things were slowly moving towards the South Africa that we see today. So just to give you some context as to why my parents were against me being a teacher, during apartheid, Black people were only allowed to pursue careers in teaching or nursing. So my parents wanted me, wanted something different for, for us as their children. Um, and so it was more like now because apartheid is going away you have a different opportunity please take it and not stay in whatever you were able to do before that's a little bit what's behind absolutely it. so they wanted um like this was the the world that 
you know, our forefathers had dreamed of. So they were like, you've got this opportunity. They would also, they'd even say, you are the dream of your ancestors. So, so it's very deep stuff for a 17 year old. Um, wow, but I really, yes. <laughs> I really wanted to be a teacher, but yeah, I ended up doing um, in university doing a bachelor's degree in investment management. Um, but yeah, like life would have it, your if your if if something is in you and it's deep in you, um, you will always end up doing what your what your purpose are, was initially, like what you were brought into this world for. So I'm so fortunate that as an agile coach and trainer, I still get an opportunity to teach, which is something that is very close to my heart, um, and in, and in some aspects also you know make a difference, not in children's lives but at least in in the lives of of of, of people. Yeah, I, I was about to say that I think if, if you're in as an agile coach, a scrum master, you definitely teach and help people try to make their lives better um, mm. and and maybe even their children's lives better. Uh, I heard the story. Yeah, I'm not going to go into the details because it's very private, but from a person that had some coaching from a friend of mine that completely changed his attitudes towards his family and everything. So that uh, had actually a lot of impact. Uh, and that was basically triggered by, by a two minute conversation of a friend of mine that, that just, yeah, try to understand. And a, a lot like what you do uh, with a lot of empathy for this person, where is that mm -hmm. basically that anger coming from? And then, yeah, a lot of things changed. Of course, it didn't change just with two minutes. There was a lot of things that happened afterwards. But just yeah. having empathy for two minutes changed um, that it. And uh, that that reminds me a little Well, it, your story reminded me about that. The fact that you walk around around in the townships and you just look at these people um it also um i don't want to go too deep in it but it also it gives me the feeling that it could be sometimes really hard for you because if you have empathy at that level then you see problems everywhere and you want to help out the whole world and well i'm sorry crazy but that's just not possible you cannot do that how do you deal with that feeling it's it's very hard. Like um, I, so I still my mom still lives in Guamashus, and I still have a lot of family um in Durban, and my like my fa my both my parents, my mom's side and father's side, we do have a lot of people that are still struggling um in terms of poverty, and it it really it's it's very hard. Like you know you as you're saying you want to help everybody, um but I had to learn quickly that if it, it all starts like just do the little that you can um if you can change one person's life you the the like the connection that they have in their family like you know it, it, it's, it's you're not just helping one person you could be passing on the baton for them to help somebody else so i still try to to help out um family members in terms of helping them you know uplift themselves go to school um so i i, I start what i'm trying to say is that it's, I'm, I'm trying to make a difference within my family and hopefully one day I'll be able to to broaden out my hands and make a difference in more lives than I would like or what all well, that I'm capable of now. <laughs> Well, with, with your role, I think you're already doing that also at, at another level. But yeah, the, especially I can I can imagine the things that happen inside the family that's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that brings even more energy i would say let's use that word uh, or tension and feeling everything that that's behind it because you you probably care even more about these people than the other people that you pass around in townships and it, it yeah it yeah. feels even harder absolutely and education has really like been a like a, a huge um part of, of the success in my family so in my father's family um my father's the only educated per the, he was the only person who who had an education um, and that's that's what led towards you know his he wanted his children to also go to university and etc. Similarly with my mother's side, so my mom she was the first she was the eldest she got an education and she ensured that um, all her siblings also went to university as well. 
So, and then that's also helped a lot in, in the lives of my cousins and all of that. And I think that's also where I have this, I get it from my parents as well, this desire of wanting to help people and help and actually start in the family because they emulated that for us when we were growing up. Wow, that's, that's an amazing story. Let's move to that next question. And I feel it's a little bit uh, related, but uh, let's, let's see. Uh, what is your biggest challenge and, and why is it the good thing for you? Um, so my, one of my biggest challenges is, is that it's actually related to mental health issues. Um, I, I, ha I struggle with social anxiety. So not not, a, not many people know this about me, but yeah, I struggle with social anxiety and I've done a lot of things to try to help me like cope with this. I've done therapy, hypnosis, um, I've done meditations. And the reason why it's why I am, um, this is something that's also good for me is that how can we be fully present at serving people as, as agilists if we don't fully work on ourselves? So this allows me to live like that continuous improvement. Um, and hopefully, you know, I mean, this is something that people also don't talk about a lot, especially where I'm in the black culture. We don't talk about mental health issues. And I hope to just make people feel that they're not alone. Um, and it is something that you there are coping mechanisms out there that, that that can help them actually deal with such issues. So that's definitely something that I struggle with yeah, even still today. Um, but I am continuously improving. Like I'm here with you today. I also try to. I'm also tr um, an up and coming speaker, um, just to try and push myself and challenge myself towards improving. I really like that you, you um, well, first of all, thank you for sharing because it's a very deep and, and difficult thing I, I can imagine. Uh, but I like the way you bring it and you also bring it immediately to, to our conversation because it's it's totally not clear in this conversation that that is an, an issue. And, and that's what a lot of people then say that um, when they have similar issues, they say, oh, but these people and then crazy, yeah, well, actually, yes. You, you have some some issues you have something you you need to work on and you do it here and you're open and honest about it and that also again shows the world and the people around you like okay this is how i'm dealing with it and and this is how i'm working with it and um, there's one thing that i'm tempting to disagree and i'm not 100 sure but you talked about okay this is hard in in the black community i think it's hard everywhere um Maybe we are a little further ahead in, in the non-black community, but I doubt it. I've seen so many people struggling with, especially in the, in the professional world, we're not allowed to talk about it. We should all be happy. And if you, if you are, and, and then they use words like crazy or whatever, you deal with it in your personal life and you don't talk about it in your professional life. And I'm like, no, we're one person. If, if, if I'm mad at something or if whatever, and then it's just not not even uh, a problem, I'm, I should not be allowed to say at work, I'm mad. I shouldn't act it out and I shouldn't throw stuff at people. But if I'm mad, I'm not going to hide it because if I'm hiding it, it will actually become much more and, and, and much worse. And that's the same thing, I think, with anxieties and with a lot of things. The more we hide it and the less we talk about it, the less, the, the more it, it, it becomes harder for everyone around us That's so true. so thank you so thank you for sharing because it's it's indeed um yeah it's 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 very powerful and i like also the way you add the the good thing about it okay that that you, you keep working on yourself yeah. um it's i hope everyone in the world does that and because for me we should all keep working on ourselves, but at least in the agile community. Uh, I always see, keep saying, if you're coach someone, but you have not been coached yourself, how do you even understand what that means for another person? And and coached, then I'm using in a very broad sense. It could be therapy, it could be some some mentoring or whatever. But if you're 
if your desire to coach people as a scrum master or an agile coach or or someone else please also have a coach i have multiple people that that are coaching me and that i need because for whatever you what like you're saying uh we're struggling and in multiple ways so um so it's it's very important to to keep working on ourselves absolutely absolutely and that kind of brings me to that next question and i because the question about what drives you and for me it it feels in the conversations just the emails the pre-talk here i feel a lot of passion in you so you really have some some things there and i think you kind of explained it already a little bit what drives you but let's hear it what where do you think that drive or that passion is coming from um, so there's two things that I would like to share in terms of what drives me. The mm -hmm. first thing, um, I've touched on it a little bit, that I'm living the dream of my forefathers. The fact that those behind me didn't have an opportunity to live freely, yeah. like, I have no other choice. I, I have to do everything to the fullest. Um, I, you, you will find, like, as we also talk now, that I draw a lot of inspiration from Oprah Winfrey, and she says, in, um, she quotes, I'll just quote her words. She says, come in as one, you enter a room as one, but you stand for thousands. So that's that's something that drives me. I'm there as crazy, but I'm representing my forefathers, you know, as I'm saying that I'm living, I'm living the, their dream. Another thing that um, drives well, before, me. Before you go to the other thing, it, it, it also puts a lot of uh, stress on you or a lot of pressure on you, I think, yeah? because you need to be not just the best of you but the best of your forefathers in a sense yeah and i think i think it's i, I want to be a good example um to to other people that look like me you know or those that are coming behind me you know some pe people from Guamashu, where i'm from um so it does put in a lot of pressure on me but i think that it's very important um for people to see people that look like them, you know, doing something great or doing something good in their lives. Like Oprah did for a lot of people when with that's her amazing. talk and every everything she does. Um, and that's, that's okay. uh, okay. well, we'll talk some more about that later. Okay, go to that next uh, second thing that I interrupted you for. <laughs> so the second thing that drives me are my daughters. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, I don't want to get emotional, but yeah, they they really drive me in the sense that I want them to learn firsthand um, from how I live my life, that they are worthy, that they matter, and that they are capable of achieving anything that their heart desires. Um, and so that pushes me towards wanting to achieve greatness because I want to be a good example for them. So it's I think both of my what both of the things that I've just spoken about that drive me are actually a, a kind of a bit similar. Um, and so definitely those are the things that push me to, every single day to want to, you know, to want to live and, and be great. And it also shows it's it's kind of like you're the connection between the past and, and, and the future in a sense. Eh? And so it's, um, yeah, I, I really like it. it's it's both different because it has a different angle to it but at the same time it's the same thing you want to be an example showing okay i represent the people from the past and and this is who we are and i want to be the best and i want to be the best so that my daughters can see okay this is how you can live your life and if you do it like this this is what you get out and then you you get a better life than than in in a sense a better life than what your parents had because you you were able to move out of the township and so that that is a very nice example to your daughters okay this is yeah if you make well maybe not the same choices but if you make good choices then you you're able to 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 go to some of these things so that's yeah. um, it's very very powerful let's move to that uh, next question and this is a moment for you basically to brag what is your biggest achievement what are you most proud of sure this is a really tough question for me because it's so easy for me to give others accolades but not not really myself um yeah i have to think very hard about this one but 
recently, a couple of weeks ago, I was um, training a class and during the breaks um, of that class, a young lady um, came up to me and she said to me, you know what, Kwezi, when I heard that you were co-training this class, I was so excited because you inspire me. And I was like, sure, I inspire oh. you, you know? And it made me very emotional, Eves, um, because, you know, at that moment, these are the things that we live for. Like if you can just make an impact on one person's life, um, the fact that I was making a difference in her life and it was also kind of like looking at myself, like at a younger version of myself. And wow. I mean, yeah, and I was like, this is all I've dreamed, I, I dreamed of as a child growing up in Guamashu is to one day build people and make a difference in their lives. So it's it's very I'm very fortunate that I, I get to do that in in, in some aspect um, as a trainer, to, you know, to teach people. And I was I really felt touched that I inspired one person. So I and, think and you inspired her even before the course. So you inspired somehow your your presence inspired her already so much to to yeah to join the course or and and and, and, and to to do these things. So that's that's. Yeah, that's that's one of the most powerful ways how people can appreciate you. So that's that's really nice. It's uh, yeah, it, it it makes me emotional. I, I feel it at, at this moment that yeah, if you if you would yeah, if I would give a course and people would even say that afterwards, that would be nice. But if they say it even before, it's like wow, okay, you came here just for me. It's just like I can imagine. Um, it, it's interesting that um, for me, you you everything we talked about before. You talk a lot about okay, the things you want to do. You you represent your forefathers, and then it's really hard to to come up with something to brag about because of course mm -hmm. that that like I said before, there's a lot of pressure on you. So yeah, of course, a lot of things, a lot of desires are there. And so maybe then it makes it hard. Okay, if I just achieve this, is this good enough for all these forefathers? But I think it is. Um, mm -hmm. Like you say, if you are able to, um, yeah, to influence just one person, that's... Um, that, and yeah. also with, the, with, my, with what I struggle with, which is anxiety, like having attention on me is, is, is really hard. Um, yeah, so that's why I said it's easy for me to 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 give others accolades, but very difficult for for even for me to sometimes um, like receive a compliment. It it, it is. It oh, becomes, so so it's it okay because I I recognize that I sometimes give people a compliment and then they brush it off. Yeah, but that's my work, or and then it's like, yes. and I, I I literally have to bring people back and say, wait a minute. I just give you a compliment and you throw it away. And so that means the next time I will probably not be wanting to give you more compliments. So it would be much easier or well, nicer to at least say thank you or, or try to, to, to let it go in, but it's hard for some people. So I'm hearing that for you, it's, it's really hard. So, uh, so that's, well, thank you for sharing because I can, I can imagine that this is, again for a lot of people really interesting to hear how hard that is for for people that that well and i would say that put the bar very high because that's what i see you do and then receiving compliments yeah it, it's it's a combination i i see a lot and it's um it it's also what makes us human it's what makes agile coaches i i've seen a lot of this in agile coaches so this is why i'm bringing it up because yeah, this story, it is your story, but at the same time, it's a story of so many Agile coaches. Um, we want to help other people, so we put the bar very high. We put the bar high for ourselves because we want to help out so many people. And then when we achieve something, it's like, yeah, but that's okay. Or it's, it's, it's only the, wait a minute, because if, if you look at where you are, if you, where you came from, you give already your your daughters a better life than than you had in the sense that uh, there are more opportunities just like your father did for you uh, mm -hmm. and just like your grandparents did to your father because he was the first to to do that so you pass it on you grow it so it it, it is it's it, these are all achievements that are happening in that family 
but at the same time makes it really hard to yeah to acknowledge the the smaller things sometimes that we do absolutely but i think i think we need to learn to to actually like dwell in those moments a little bit um because it's important for for us to to also give ourselves a pat on the back now and again um yeah i also think it's also got to do with what's what's happening inside you your own self worth as well when people give you compliments um it's sometimes hard to to accept it if you don't value yourself mm that's 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 indeed very powerful um it and i don't know exactly what you said but two sentences ago you said something that reminded me of what a friend of mine started doing this year is that every compliment he receives he starts to to write it down in in a notebook and that uh, is his i don't know how it's called but he has a special name for the notebook but it's his notebook that he's is coming back to when he doesn't feel that well when he's yeah and when he does he feels that he's not worth it and anything and then it just yeah he looks back at it and says okay if said this and and that's other person said that just just to remind him okay i do some nice things and people are happy about some of the things i'm doing and and yeah that i think it's so powerful that because like you say we have to let it in so this compliments sometimes we don't do it and so even capturing them to to relook at it at the moment that we may be even better accepting it and mm-hmm. and looking at it at the moments that are really tough in our life because we all have tough moments in our life there's all moments that we think why am i doing this and shouldn't i just be yeah it wouldn't my life be easier if i would just stay in the township and just do mm-hmm. drugs and whatever then then i wouldn't have to worry about the world but yeah of course there is there is other problems at that moment so mm-hmm. i do think that uh, that your life choices were much better but at the same time you might worry sometimes um mm-hmm. so it's but that's it's, a, that's actually a very good suggestion i'm actually going to use that um is to actually take like note down the compliments or the little achievements that you have in life and i think that's that's an a, an amazing example that it helps your friend um deal with in like in hardships when they deal when they come across difficult times they can look at back at these these comments or or notes that they've made about themselves and it helps them you know come out of that and realize and pick themselves up and say hey i'm actually amazing let me you know continue and move forward that's a, that's yeah, a and yeah well I'll I'll let them know uh, it's 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 it is indeed amazing because it's uh, it's for me it's a very amazing person that has done that's achieved some really nice things in the the agile community I was about to say Belgium but I think it's even more international and um he kind of realizes but doesn't realize it and so he needs a lot of things that uh, that help him to keep realizing it and um and yeah it's it's just powerful and and i'm using it ever since as well i've i've started well i said ever since i know about it for since a month or so so i started gathering some of these things and it's it's yeah it it's helping a lot of people let's move to that next question i think is no i think i just skipped this question wait um no the biggest achievement i did so yes indeed we are to personal agility so this is a little bit different than the original version of the book in the sense that uh, i know that most agilists now have are, are we're all doing some some personal things that help us so and i forgot about asking that in the original book so i thought let's let's do this here what is something that you personally use for yeah to to improve your life or to to make yeah whatever anything that uh, that helps you Hmm. I think maybe I'm, I I saw the question as in like what what advice do I have to to other agilists in terms of um Oh well, that's that's nice that's a nice diversion diversion <laughs> from it so I like that as well so go ahead Um so when I like thinking about that it also comes back to to me as a person um what I've shared with you about um empathy So I think it's the importance of empathetic leadership. Um I strongly believe that if leaders in organizations had empathy, this would truly truly make their organizations or the people that um are part of the organizations more successful. 
I don't know if have you read the book Leading the Empathetic Agile Enterprise by Gail Ferreira? I don't think so. Uh, so that's already a book that I will check off and I will uh, add to my list. Uh, it's, an, it's a title that doesn't even tell me anything. So it's it's really interesting. So tell me some more about that. Um, it's a very interesting book. Um, it's it it speaks or talks about the you know the importance of you know empathy and or or leading with empathy and how it's characterized um, as the ability to increase productivity in the workforce. So trying to invoke mm -hmm. like a personal connection with your colleagues, your staff. Um, it, it, and you know, getting in touch with their feelings and ideas, perspectives and emotions, taking into account like different backgrounds as well, um, which has also come, become more prevalent in the world that we live in today. You know, we work remotely with with, with people from across the world. And so it's it's taking that into consideration and and connecting connections with that. Um, and it just talks about how it is the importance of emotional intelligence is um, that em empathy is demonstrably effective, it improves communication, and it, it results in, in highly productive outcomes. So, and it's so crucial, um, Eves, in the, in the life, in the competitive world that we live in today. So I think that's my, my tip, my agility tip, is that um, I, I think our leaders in our organizations, in our lives, I think that they need to, we need to try and find ways of, of having more empathy for for others um, and those that are around us, and I think that's the key, that will be the key contributing factor towards um, creating a more successful outcome. I really like. Well, first of all, I, I I think it's still linked to you because you you we talked already about empathy with yourself, so it still think is is something you do already. But I really like the way you bring it because it's um, a lot of people sometimes or these the, the so called leaders you talk about sometimes think that empathy is for the weak and and it's it's not no you you actually sh show that or at least it's explained in the book how uh, or that's what I understand at least is that how that empathy for the people even creates more value for for the company in the end and so that's that's the thing that is interesting is that um, people somehow yeah there is all this you have the soft and hard skills and whatever i i don't believe in in too much these these distinctions or i would if there is a distinction i would say these soft skills are really the hard skills and vice versa but it's so much important indeed if you can just have a conversation with someone showing some empathy that will actually uh, bring in much more value both uh, and i would bring it even value to personal and professional i mean there is value and we're working like eight hours a day at least with with the people around us in many moments that is that is more we we talk more with colleagues than we talk with with our family because eight hours is is a lot um mm -hmm. and that makes our lives already better and at the same time like you say it brings so much more value for for the company so that that is indeed a very powerful uh, thing to, to do so we'll add the the book as well in the show notes as an extra book uh so thank you for sharing and now i'm going to again the same one and the other one, the next one that I added is about remote working. And you just mentioned it. We're all working remote these days. So do you have any tip about remote working? Um, so what, what I've learned about um, remote working definitely is that it's given uh, like me an opportunity to work with people that I probably wouldn't have had the chance to like before, before remote thing became a thing. Um, I think we should also see like what um what I've learned about it as well is that it's also helped me get an opportunity to learn about different cultures. So I was working with a team where some of the individuals were based in India. Um, and I recently learned about what some of their festivals that they have. I think one the, the one that stands out is the the, the color festival, Holi, um, Holy, which is represents um good overcoming evil um, and it's such a it, i mean it's it's i probably wouldn't have known about that um had it not been for remote remote work so it's definitely given me an opportunity to to get in touch with other cultures um you know speak to people like you and it's it's something that i think is 
it's also like put a spin on individuals, um, individual interactions over processes and tools, because we thought that meant we would we should all be co-located and be together. But now we've got amazing tools that still allow us to have those face-to-face -face interactions um, and, and still allows us to, to you know, connect and collaborate with people across borders. So it's definitely taught me more about the world um, at, at large that I wouldn't have necessarily known about before. Interesting the way you phrase it, because basically what you're saying is, well, the inter individuals and interactions is, is most important. I definitely agree. But the way the manifesto is phrased is, is it's over and it doesn't mean that the other parts are not important. And definitely in the in the pandemic, for example, we learned that uh, that the tools are be became much better. And now remote working is much easier than, than 20 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the tools are helping us. This tool that we're using now to record this, I, I didn't even know it like two years ago. I, I don't think I knew it one year ago. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even know when it, I, I should actually look it up if it exists for already five years. We've been using, I've been using other kind of tools to do remotely. Uh, in, in 2004, I think I started using Skype. So that's it. That is already almost around for 20 years, but a lot of these tools have improved a lot. And indeed, they help us to have this, this personal connection here. And it, yeah, it's not the same because we cannot hug, we cannot, um, but at the same time, it, it allows us to, to talk to each other on a Sunday morning and then go back to our families and without needing to travel for, for a lot of miles. And so that, that's definitely helping. And of course, you learn a lot more if you if I would visit your country. I was actually scheduled to visit uh, to visit South Africa um, in the summer after the the summer of the when the pandemic started. So in the summer of 2020, which uh, unfortunately we 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 were not able to do, and so we still have to figure out if we'll do it and and one because our family situation has changed a little bit. But yeah. I'm happy that um, with the, the remote tools that we have these days, I can have a virtual look into your world and, and learn from your culture. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's definitely I, is there. I taught you today about the Zulu people. <laughs> exactly, and but that's that's the kind of thing. Uh, it's interesting that you mention it because it's it's one of the the things that we read about it, and I don't. I, I have to. I, I would make mistakes, so, so I don't know anymore which uh, cities or parts that we would visit. So it's just too dangerous to mention anything. But Zulu is definitely something that we we read into and then we learned about. So I assume it was some of the things that we would visit, even if it's of course the um, I would say the tourist version of it, probably because that's how how tourist works when you go to these kind of countries. Um, that was also the one thing that that kept me from going for a long time because I, I thought about I should be able to to visit and, and not have the the tourist version because then I pay a lot of money to basically people in Belgium to, to go visit and then they they make so I I wanted for a long time to see can I do it on my own but I just realized if you want to visit another con continent mm. you need to know so much more and you don't know it and I said okay at least the very first time. Uh, I need to go with such thing because that's that's the, almost the only way to, to do that. Was this supposed to be like a personal visit or a work visit? It was a personal visit um, mm -hmm. with my. I wanted to have so in two thousand and twenty, my uh, oldest son turned eighteen, and so I thought this is the last time that we well the last time we don't know, but in one of the last times that we go with the full family and on a holiday it would be the nice to go for a, a three or four week trip. Um, in, in, in another and when I was much younger, we thought about let's visit. Uh, um, America, uh, but everything that's happening in America, I definitely want to do that kind of visit there. And I thought, well, why not? Uh, and I don't know, I think I had that idea for about 10 years. Why not do such a trip when the kids are old enough to understand everything about cultures and, and do that with, um, with uh, in the African continent? So um, it's still something you still get an opportunity to do because Sure, Africa is a very beautiful continent. Um, South Africa is a very beautiful country. 
and there's a lot there's a lot that you would get from from coming here i really think that you should keep that in your bucket list oh it, 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 it's definitely in our bucket list and um we wanted to redo it this year but unfortunately um exams because now he's at university so there's lots of more practical stuff to to take care of uh, but it's definitely in our bucket list and we will I'm, I'm sure we'll do it we just need to figure out the right moment um and it will become harder so we don't have to postpone it too long but it's definitely something we want to do um and yeah we'll uh we'll definitely do that let's you uh must let know. Yeah. you must let me know when you do you must let me know and i'll I'll definitely give you a list of places to see, um, depending on which part of South Africa you come to. That's a great idea. That was not the intention of this talk, but uh, I'll <laughs> take it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> definitely great idea. Okay, let's move to that next question. And that's uh, the official question about the book. You already mentioned the book and you already, I think, mentioned the order of the book you want to talk about, but let's uh, let's still hear it. What book do you want to, to bring in? Um, so I'm sure you've heard that I draw a lot of inspiration from Oprah Winfrey. So the book that I've, I've I last read was called The Path Made Clear um, by Oprah Winfrey. And that should be the book, right? Yes, yes. Um, so this book, it's about, it's like a compilation of her personal stories, as well as some of the interviews that she's done with amazing people on, on, on how they like navigated finding their purpose and their path some beautiful quotes that are really inspirational in the book. Um, and I mean, talking about purpose, we spoke about, I, I shared a bit that I wanted to be a teacher and how in some way, like if something is in you, you it, it will manifest itself in your career in some way or form. Um, but what I want to share with you about the book, if you, if you can let me just read, find a, a quote from it that um, I really enjoyed. Um, by Pastor A. R. Bernard on changing purpose. So it says, purpose is dynamic. Purpose continues to be applied throughout your life. Because your gifts, your talents, and your abilities that you are given that are given to you by God remain consistent throughout your life. But how you apply that changes as you live life from one level to another and you go through the stages of life. So this was very profound for me because I always thought that we all, we had one purpose on earth. Um, but now I realize that you may have multiple, you may, your purpose may manifest in different things based on your, your talents and abilities. It comes through in, 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 in other, in other ways. So for example, the teaching, if, the, if I believe that's a part of my purpose, um, it may come out in, in, in how I teach my kids things. It comes out um, in training as an agile coach. So it just manifests differently um, dependent on the different stages that you are in life. So I found that very interesting um, and a different way to to think about purpose. I really like that because it's um, purpose is a it's 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 a kind of word that um, that has um it's a difficult word uh, in the sense that it uh, when we think about it it looks like such a big thing and then once you have it and we always hear or i i at least hear about people who are having a purpose and then it's and then then yeah i don't know it's it's the different the big people in the world that um that have done that um and then they had a big purpose and then it's like oh i should have such a thing and it and what what this quote is is telling us or what i'm hearing in it is that um there is multi it, it can be such a purpose but it can shift and you can apply it in different ways and and like yeah. what your story is like i wanted to to be a teacher but actually the purpose was more i want to teach people and that's that's okay that could be done in school but like you said your parents wanted you to do it somewhere else and now you're doing it um and with, with business in, in a sense as a scrum master and, and you're coaching people and you're training people so that's still is a similar part of that purpose um absolutely yeah i definitely want to yeah i'll i'll type out the full quote uh, because it it sounds like a, a very nice way to talk about um about uh, what we're talking here about 
and somehow I lost my mouse pointer, so I don't, I cannot bring in the other question. Where is it? Okay, here. Um, but it's it. Um, it also feels like we're going a little bit too quick on on the book. Is there? Um, could you tell me a little more what the book did for for you? Um, so what what the book did for me definitely like sometimes you you hit a place in your life where um, I've I've come to a point to realize that there there must be something there's something bigger like something there must be a bigger reason why we are all brought into Earth um, so it's it's I'm trying to find to find those answers for me as an individual like why why what is my why am I here like why am I even having this conversation with you, um, Eves. Mm -hmm. Again, similar to the, the the lady that I trained, like you think that you your purpose is one thing, but the impact that you have um, may be something else for somebody else, you know? So so I'm trying to discover, rediscover my purpose as a as a person. Um, sometimes as a mother, you, you also get like caught up in being a mother. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, find out what does Quasi like enjoy doing. What like what what mm. what are things that fulfill me as a as an individual? And again, um, I said I want to be a, a good example for my children. I want them to see their mother being happy in 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 living their purpose or whatever fulfills them, um, depending on on what that is. So I'm, I'm I'm in a place in my life where I'm trying to reestablish who I am. Yeah. And and in that sense, I the, the the I like also the the interesting part about the title of the book, the path made clear. It's it's not the path was clear or whatever. No, it's the path made clear. So it's yeah, the path that is taken, and maybe it came even only clear after it, and uh, or before that. That's yeah. not clear in that title, but that that's fine because that's that's a little bit how sorry how life is. Sometimes it's very clear what direction you want to go and sometimes it's like where is the path i don't see it anymore it seems to stop but i need to continue and and mm -hmm. what direction should i go and and sounds a little bit like you're at, at such a cross point like okay i need to figure out a little more about myself and um, and i really love that you link it back to your daughters because you do also again sh yeah being just who you are um and 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 just doing and but not being unhealthy that would show a very um or well if you would not be happy that would not be a good example for your for your children as well so you definitely want to um show them this is um this is what i want to do um because that's again the nice example even in the hard moments because yeah. making choices life choices are hard choices sometimes absolutely and uh, I think so often we we do what we feel others expect of us um, and not what really fulfills us. So um, some, like, you know, I find myself doing things like this is what I'm expected to be or do as a mother. Um, and sometimes we lose our way in, in other people's expectations of ourselves. So it's very important for you to to get back into the heart of things and try to discover what's important for you. Um, and I think that's the that's the key to also living a more fulfilled life is is doing things for is to also just think about yourself and being selfish um, at times. And again, that's if, if people see you happy, they'll feed off that energy. So I think what's important for my kids, it's not only what I can provide for them or, you know, how I can be there for them, but it's also for them to see me being happy, just being myself. It's, that's a really powerful question and I uh, um, statement not question um, it, it reminds me when when you talk about other people wanting from others and um, the first moment that you become a, uh, a parent I remember it also as a father and I think for for my partner it was even harder there's like thousands of people having ideas and you don't you you have that little child with you you have no no manual on how to deal with it well there's actually thousand books about it but they're all doing different things and all your friends have all opinions on how to do it differently then you have a, you have your own parents and your parents-in-law and then you have so many other things and in the end you just need to do what you need 
think is right. Um, but it's so hard when there's so many opinions and so many people around you thinking that, hey, this is what you need to do. Yes. And and that's, well, I, th I think it, it becomes, e or there is less of that when, when children are older, but there is still a lot of that, that people think you need to behave as a parent like this or that, or somehow it's also things that, that is in our heads. There is a, that little voice that says, this is what you need to do. And in uh, many moments, I don't even know where that little voice is coming from because sometimes I know it's my, my mother or my father, but then a lot of times I don't even know where that voice is coming from because I know my parents would never say such things. But it's still there and it's still tempting to, to listen to it and instead of trying to figure out what I want to do. I, I think it's really powerful that you share that um, uh, and, and link it again to, to the happiness of your children because indeed we might do the, the wrong thing for whatever strange advice that a little voice is telling us and, and not be happy and then our children see us not happy and, and yeah, that, that's a really bad um, example. Mm. Uh, that's again putting a lot of pressure on us, huh? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I I recognize a lot of what you're saying there. Thank you very much, and I think it's. Um, I, I told you before that the the Oprah Winfrey book is a book that uh, that's interests me. I know my daughter read one of her other books. Um, I think it's what I know. Uh, I'm not sure what what's the exact title, but I know that she she really loved. Even at the age of thirteen, she really loved that book, and so it's um, it it put for me like okay, uh, a few of uh, Oprah Winfrey's books on my list to read as well because I do think indeed she has the inspiration to do a lot of things. So. And I could learn again some, some more from, from black culture on top of that. So that might be interesting as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I highly recommend that you do um, get to read one of her books. <laughs> you won't regret it. I think so. I think so. Thank you. So let's move to that uh, next question is um, what person should I, should I ask next? Um, so I think the question you should ask next is, what do you want to be remembered for? Mm. And I think my answer to that would be, um, so another woman that also inspires me, Maya Angelou, um, I'll quote something she once said. So she says, people will forget what you said. They'll forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. So I want to be remembered for someone who made people feel seen, like I see you. Like I want people to remember me for, for, for that, for being the person that, saw, that actually saw them and made them feel seen. Wow, that is, it makes me speechless because it's indeed, it's, it's a wonderful, um, well, both, both a wonderful question and a wonderful answer. It's um, it's indeed the kind of thing that um, yeah, what we need to ask ourselves much more, um, and I think that and if you can do that like like the way you say it, that you want to see people and and I hear actually seeing them as they are, not just seeing their picture or seeing them, but just seeing them again with the full empathy that uh, we talked about in the beginning. It's mm. it's really about it's not okay. I see you, but I I see you as a whole. I see you. I notice you when maybe you. you I don't know, limp a little bit, or you have a, a little thing. I notice that you, yeah, there, there is something, uh, both the good and the bad parts that makes people see. And it's, it's such a powerful quote. I, I really like that quote. It's, it's one of my favorites as well about indeed. Um, I, we can say a lot of things, we can do a lot, but it's really how, how people, uh, yeah, if, if they feel seen, that makes the, the real difference there. Um, if you if you treat people like numbers you may be doing the right thing but at the same time they will not remember you or they will remember you in the wrong way and uh, they will um, def definitely not uh, not call call back um, and, and yeah that's that's definitely something and yes so let's um yeah it's it's a very short answer but at the same time it's so profound and like 
should I ask some more? Like, no, this is this is so 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 powerful there. Um, so that was that next question that I was wrongly saying before. Uh, who do you think I should ask next? Because I think you have such a large network, lots of friends there. Uh, because you work so much in that community, that I'm really looking forward to that answer. Um, so one, the first person that actually came into mind. There's a long list, but the first person um, is a is a lady called um, Andrea Rue. Um, she is yeah a force to be reckoned with. Um, she's the founder of a company called Agile Hat that is based in in South Africa. Um, and she's she's a she's a wonderful. I think she'd be a wonderful inspiration to 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 many. And um, I think she'd be a very interesting person to to bring on to um, who is agile. Um, there's also a lot of other people that I can think of, like Gail Jacobs, um, Nono Donza, Bevan Williams, um, Chris Garvey. Sure, the list so the list goes on and on, but I will definitely make sh make it a point for me to to share those names with you because I think there's a lot more that people should know about um, the awesome work that we're doing here in South Africa. Yeah, I, I think that that is definitely true because for me, I know that um, the Scrum Alliance has been coming to to Africa for a few years already. Uh, I've never been to actually one of the Scrum Alliance summit anywhere. I mean, not even anywhere else in the world. Uh, but the ones in South Africa have been on my list for for a while. Again, for multiple reasons, not being able to to join. Um, and some of the names, I think I heard Angela's name before. Um, uh, Bevan, I heard as well because he was also in, in one of the books. The other names, I'm, I'm not sure because, um, uh, well, I don't always know how to pronounce certain names again because of culture. And so when you pronounce them, if I would see the names written, maybe I would recognize it. Uh, and it's part of what I also want to learn much more with these um, because we're so much um, used to our culture that we don't always know how to pronounce names, which is again also something we need to learn about more seeing people um that's that's indeed it's it's very important that uh, for most people if you want to feel seen if you know how to pronounce their name already correctly they feel much more seen uh, and that's 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 definitely something um and um, that helps us in, in, in being seen so thank you very much for your time um this this was a wonderful conversation um it's uh it, were um i tried to not jump into and add too many of my own stories because i really loved the, the things that you brought it's uh, it's been a wonderful time and uh before we go i want to see um what is uh what could be a good way for people to reach out to you Oh, um, a good way is on my on my on email, um, uh, quezi dot at gmail dot com. Um, you can also find me on Twitter as quezintle um, at quezintle, or you can also find me on LinkedIn, um, quezi mputa on LinkedIn. I think I think LinkedIn would probably be the the easiest way that people could find me. I put LinkedIn here because that, that's indeed what I hear a lot of people thinking. Uh, I don't think I follow you on Twitter, so I, I didn't I didn't have that link um, already. Um, but yeah, that, so this I will put all these things in the show notes that people if they want. Well, I won't put the email because that will be too easy for uh, for bots to work out. But uh, the other things I will I will add. Um, and if people want to to find the email address, the LinkedIn will probably help uh, as well. Absolutely. So, so thank you very much for your time, and um, I wish you a wonderful um, rest of a Saturday, uh, Sunday. I don't know why I say Saturday. Uh, a wonderful Sunday, and uh, I hope we can uh, indeed one time meet uh, in South Africa somewhere, and then uh, yeah, have a, a, a continuation of this conversation. Let's put it like this. Thank you so much for having me. It was, it's been a pleasure um, having this conversation with you. And same to you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday too and the, the week that's ahead. Thank you so okay, much. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you for watching Who's Agile, where the stories of Agilists come to life. I hope you liked today's interview. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and want to get to know other Agilists.